there was a lot of pre prejudice, no? So it was not easy to make German friends. Yeah, so I can remember uh, you go to the university and uh, when you get assignments and you get an assignment as a team, the Germans will kind of isolate themselves yeah, from the others. And then you, you had to find somebody else who's left out and then you, you, you do the assignments with them. And when you go there, you find people with, uh, with their wives, with their European wives and everything. Uh, and they were like telling me, huh, you think you're going to study and get a job. Yeah, you're going to study, finish, and you're not going to get a job. So you search for yourself a, a big mama over here. Yeah, and then just get married and life goes on. You know, people are very uh, desperate. Yeah, because you know, the school system prepares you to work for somebody else. Yeah, because so many people, they're just one salary away from poverty. So if the institution tells you there's no salary this month, yeah, you, you, you don't have means to pay for your yes. salary and everything. Yeah. And people are afraid of losing their job. Mm -hmm. So they're like, okay, if I now go and demand for this salary, I'm going to lose my job. They're going to yes. take somebody yes. else. So that's one thing that is making people or hindering people to speak up. Mm. A very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS. My name is Lynn Googie and guys, today I have a very inspirational story for you. I have been wanting to host this man for a long time. I do not want to preempt a lot of details. All I know is that you are going to be motivated by the end of today's episode. But before I do let him introduce himself, guys, I know a lot of people are getting conned, trying to get apartments, houses here and there. And that's why today Today, I'm not even paying bills, but I want to talk to you about King's developers and they have amazing projects. If you are looking for affordable housing, they have Boma in Riru where you can be able to grab yourself an apartment and they even have high ends, even Hapo Katikati, Vintage and Apollo. Guys, you can see right in the screen, these people, I trust them, I am vouching for them and I do not want you to get scammed in the process of getting yourself an apartment. Department. So do check them out and their prices are very, very, very friendly. And I will be leaving their contact details here on the screen and pinned on the comment section. And do let me know what your experience is with them because I would want us to continue creating awareness about being able to get properties without being conned in the process. Yeah, so check them out and let me know what you think. And of course, I gotta say thank you to Elegance Fashion for coming through with this beautiful outfit. I feel like I have a lot of life in me today. So thank you so much, my people at Elegance. And if you are able to get yourself something, guys, their contact details are right here on the screen. And now without further ado, please allow me to let my guest today introduce himself. Good morning. Yeah, so good morning. How are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, the thank dress uh, goes very well with the, with the furniture. Oh, you think so? Yeah, yeah. And the background it's as well. beautiful it's very beautiful oh, thank you so much and <laughs> yeah. thank you for making time yeah. it's not been easy for you to get to this show this morning no it's not been easy you yes. know we uh, traveled on sunday we yeah. got at the house at 10 o'clock in the morning yes. and then reached nairobi at 7 20 so our flight was uh, 13 hours oh man yeah and we had a small kid yeah. and uh, lots of bags to carry yes so we didn't have a good night's sleep yesterday yeah. but uh, we had to make it for the show i appreciate you <laughs> taking your time yeah. yes please introduce yourself yeah, so my name is uh, Harun uh, Njago, actually yeah. Dr. Harun Njago. Yeah. I'm a neurologist, neurology consultant. I deal with uh, diseases like Parkinson's disease, dementia, yeah. stroke, anything that has to do with the nerves, uh, guillain barre syndrome, CIDP. Mm. Mm. Um, I've specialized or subspecialized in even uh, neuroimmunology yes. and electrophysiology. Yeah. I'm like the elect electrician uh, in medicine. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my, that's my, um, that's your niche. That's my niche. Oh man, take your flowers. Cause you know, sometimes, and someone told me, we gotta learn how to also take credits and take flowers when they are being given to us. Exactly. Cause sometimes we wanna downplay our achievements mm -hmm. because we don't think that that's us. Did you ever think this could be you? Um, I knew at some point mm. uh, when I was growing up that that is, that is in me because I had a lot of inspiration. 
I had a lot of uncles and a lot of cousins who were doctors and mm -hmm. they were doing so well. Mm -hmm. And uh, my goal was to be like them. Yes. So I was always inspired to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. So with the Kenyan environment mm -hmm. and with the Kenyan schooling system, mm -hmm. For one to be a doctor, one had to have like, one had to be a genius. Yes. Yeah. So you had to have straight A's and everything. Yeah. And uh, the Kenyan uh, government or the Kenyan schooling system, they don't offer uh, medical studies for everybody. Mm. Yeah. So you can have an A minus, yeah, but still not get a chance to go for medical school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I was um, inspired yeah, uh, by my relatives. Yes. Yeah? I always wanted to be a doctor, mm. although it was difficult mm. to get a place in Kenya, mm -hmm. but I knew I had to do it by all means necessary. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. when I was uh, going to school, mm. I was searching for other options uh, after, after, after secondary school. Mm. Uh, I didn't manage to get a straight A, I got an A minus, no? oh. but uh, I was not admitted for medical school. Yes. So I had to chance for other, I had to, I had to search for other um, yeah. ways. Yeah. of getting to medical school mm. so I had a cousin of mine uh, he made it to go to England actually I owe a lot of uh, a lot of uh, credit to him mm -hmm. yeah um, I don't know if it's allowed to call somebody by name on the show His yes name is, it's allowed uh, if they are Tim, okay Timo Guru yes. uh, shout out uh, yeah. he's a neurosurgeon mm -hmm. practicing in Germany yeah so he uh, is the one who paved the way for us yes yeah, so when he was growing up, actually, we grew up in uh, Eastlands, mm. yeah, in Isili. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Isili. Upper Isili. Upper Isili. Oh. So we grew up in Isili. Mm. Uh, we, well, we grew up in a, in a plot, yeah, you know, like the way people used to live in Isili, mm. in plots. Mm. So we grew up, all of us, together. So he's the one who went, I think he went to Europe in 1996 or 1995. So he went to England initially. Mm. Uh, he didn't go straight to England to do medicine, so he went for college, higher studies, and did some uh, accounting. Mm -hmm. And uh, he found his way uh, to med school in Germany. Mm -hmm. So he had to learn German and then uh, leave England, uh, leave English, so yes. he had to learn a, a different language. Then he went to Germany. Okay. So he studied Germany, he studied medicine over there. And he's the one uh, who told us that it's possible to go and do uh, medicine in Germany, even if wow. you don't have a straight A. You can still go. You can still go. I'm interested mm -hmm. in this part yeah. because I also don't think we give a lot of credit to relatives that have paved the way yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that you acknowledge that he actually paved the way. Yes. But I'm really interested in your life growing up mm -hmm. because I want my audience to be able to understand your journey. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Right now we see a very successful doctor. We see someone who is a successful family man. Someone who is also trying to grow in the process mm -hmm. but i would want them to understand the journey, the journey. where how was life like mm -hmm. or did you have everything given mm -hmm. or handed to mm. you actually uh growing up in isili back then you know when you grow up in in that environment you don't know that there's poverty so everything for us was just normal. I keep telling people that. <laughs> you know, I keep saying, sorry for interrupting, yeah. but I gotta, mm. you know, when I was growing up, there was just sewage passing by. Yeah. Mm. But at that time, it's like you can't hear the smell, you can't smell it mm -hmm. because it's like the norm, right? Like you're used to. Yeah, so when mm -hmm. you're growing up in those places, you actually don't know exactly. there is poverty. Exactly. But sorry, go on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for us, it was normal. Mm. Yeah, it was normal to, to, to create your own toys. Yeah, it was normal for the ladies, for the kids, for the girls to, to, to make their own uh, dolls. Yeah. We had to make our own balls. No? So uh, for us, we didn't see that as poverty. We used to see it as normal. But uh, going to visit our relatives uh, who used to live in high-end places in the west side of Nairobi. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we used to see the, the life they used to live. And I used to visit my uncles and cousins mm -hmm. also as well uh, in their private practices. So that's when, when you change the environment, that's when you realize, oh, uh, there's another life outside there. Yeah. Yeah, so I knew that they, there has to be something better. Yeah, life is not supposed to be like this, the way it is in Isili. So there has to be something better. So um, growing up, actually, I was born in uh, Pumwani, Pumwani Hospital. Oh, another Pumwani baby, <laughs> me too. You're also born in Pumwani? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. You also born in Isili? No, no. Um, Pumwani, mm -hmm. uh, then Mudega, then Huruma. Ah, okay, yes. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was born in uh, Pumwani Hospital, uh, uh, raised by a single mom. Um, so she, she, 
she had a lot of work she had mm. to be the dad she has yes. to be the she had to be the mom at the same time so she was kind of a, a very beautiful young charming lady she got me at the age of 20 now so um she had to be strict and also be a lovely lady at the same time to me so uh, i think she also had her challenges now trying to raise me up as a boy and um, life was always not easy mm. yeah I didn't feel like I was missing out on stuff. I mean, things like uh, getting a basketball or getting a bike, those are not yes. easy to come by. Yes. She couldn't afford everything mm. for me, mm -hmm. uh, but we had to improvise. Mm. And um, yeah, it was, uh, for us as a kid, it was normal. Mm. Yeah, but it, uh, I was lacking some stuff that I, that I wished I would have. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, single mom family, uh, mm. she had her struggles. Um, and uh, yeah, but she made it. Mm. She made it. Okay. Uh, she raised. She she made managed to raise me as a very responsible guy. Good. Yes. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. beautiful. So when mom was alive, yeah. Oh, she passed. She passed. Condolences. She passed. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So when mom was alive, things were good. Yeah. So um, actually, she is the one. Uh, she when I when I was admitted to secondary school, um, I was admitted in Aquinas Aquinas High School. Oh. So Aquinas High School was uh, was a basketball school. Yes. Yeah. So it was very popular for basketball, and I was very also inspired to play basketball. So um, I was admitted in Aquinas. So the first year I was also admitted in the second team of the basketball uh, basketball team. Yes. So my mom noticed that uh, this guy is playing a lot of basketball. He's losing course now. Oh. He's coming late because he had uh, trainings. I used to have trainings yes. after school. Yeah. So she's the one who said, okay, now this has to stop. There has to be a better way. Yeah. So she took me to Miranda High School. Oh. Yeah. So um, leaving Aquinas High School, uh, the popular basketball school, yes. I had to go to Miranda High School. Mm -hmm. I never heard of that place. Yeah. I never heard of the school. And uh, it's in the village. Yeah. It's in Bondo, Bondo District. Mm -hmm. And uh, life there was tough. Yeah, in Miranda High School. So living in Nairobi, living in the mom, life was good. Yeah, so I was taken out of Aquinas High School. Yeah. yeah? I was taken to Miranda, Miranda. High School yeah, in the village, 37 degrees. Yeah, and uh, Miranda High School, I'll say, okay, it, shipped, it sharpened me to be a very uh, responsible person, mm. uh, to not to take life uh, easy. Uh, because life was not easy over yes. there. It's uh, actually I used to refer to it as a as a boot camp, mm -hmm. but I think it was it was made like that in design, mm -hmm. yeah, for for people not to take life easy. So being taken to Miranda High School, um, we never used to have water. Like uh, I'm drinking water right now, yes. three liters a day. Mm -hmm. So that was not a, a, a normal thing. So the day I was admitted, um, I can remember in the night uh, I was shedding tears. Yeah, because I hadn't drunk water. Yeah, so uh, imagine you uh, living uh, home. Yeah, traveling all that way, and then getting admission and everything is thirty-seven degrees over there. At night is also very warm, and uh, no water. Yeah, and people um, used to uh, make sure that they have their own water, and it was very hard to come by. Mm. So you even had to bribe somebody to give you water. a glass of water. So uh, that was my welcome in Miranda High School. Yeah, but. Um, as time went by, uh, I, I got used to that. Yeah, uh, but uh, life was harsh over there. So, but it happened, it chipped me. Um, yeah. So, um, when I was preparing for Form Four, when I was preparing for my KCSE, that's when I got the news that Mom is dead. Yeah. So that changed the course, and I couldn't concentrate as much. Yeah. So I ended up doing KCSE anyway, and. Um, Life after KCC or life after Form 4, that was the time that life was now difficult. Yeah, because I was used to mom's care. Mom used to provide everything. Uh, but now, all of a sudden, oh, there's nobody to provide. She's no more. She's no more there. So um, we had to uh, relocate Yeah, from Isili. We had to go and live with, our, with relatives. Um, and living with relatives is actually not as easy as people think. It's tricky. Yeah, it's tricky. So here I am, an orphan, yeah, um, and uh, it's like, um, what I also say is like, um, if you have a property and you're the owner of the property, you take good care of it, yes. yeah. But if you're now, let's say you have an iPhone and you leave it uh, somewhere on the table like that and nobody's going to take care of it, 
So people are going to misuse it. They're not going to take care of it the way you used mm. to take care of it. Mm. Yeah. So um, that what happened. I won't yeah go, go into much details. into details mm -hmm. of what happened, but mm. life was tough. Mm. So all of a sudden, nobody's going to give you pocket money. Yeah. Nobody's there to to uh, provide you with any advice. You're on your own. You're on your own. So um, yeah, that's when I realized. Okay, now life has started. So I had to search for means and ways to get a job and um, yeah, you know, getting a job in Kenya if you don't have vitamin B, vitamin B12, actually in, in Germany they say it's by vitamin B12. Mm. Yeah, vitamin B12 means you have to have connections. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So if you don't have connections. <laughs> vitamin B12. <laughs> vitamin, vitamin yes. B12. Yes. So if you don't have connections, then it was, it's not easy to get a job. So mm. you have a lot of people who have good grades but they don't have jobs. Mm. So I can remember the first job that I applied, actually I got it through a vitamin B12 uh, of, of, my, of a friend of mine. Mm. So the parents talked to a guy who owned a, a, a pub, yeah, in, um, in, uh, in, in town, in the CBD. And um, he told me to take to him my CV. So um, when I went for the job interview, um he came i think two hours late mm. yeah so i had to wait for him two hours <laughs> yes yeah for two hours yeah so um showing him my cv mm. uh he checked my cv so i was ready to do the job at the pump yes. yeah i was ready to to uh, stand behind the guitar mm. and sell to people mm. yeah anything that i could sell in the pub so um he looked at my cv mm -hmm. and he said i'm sorry yeah the the job is available yeah, I could hire you anytime, but I'm, I'm sorry, looking at your CV and looking at your grades, this job is not meant for you. I'm not going to give you the job. You are overqualified. I was overqualified for the oh. job. Yeah, so he turned, he, mm. he turned, he turned down the, the job offer. So I was disappointed, of course, because I needed money and um, uh, I had to search for other options. So the same vitamin B <laughs> is the one who organized for me another job at industrial area. Yeah, so uh, industrial area, I had to trek all the way uh, from home, go to industrial area. And uh, my first job uh, was to, uh, I worked in a factory that used to deal with uh, mumia sugar. Mm. So we used to carry those bags of mumia sugar. I don't know if it's, 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 it's existing I anymore. Don't see it. I, think, I don't see it anymore. I think it was closed. Yeah. yeah? So we used to carry those bags. Mm -hmm. uh, some bags were 25 kilos, some yeah. bags were 50 kilos. Yeah. So imagine the lorry that was uh, uh, uploading the mm. loading them and uh, and uh, and picking the the, the bags up. Uh, it was like five, I would say something like a hundred meters away. Yeah. So you had to run. Yeah. Go pick it up. Put it in your back. Now run. And and time is money. Now. Yes. So you had to hurry up. Yeah. So you had to run. I had to run, yeah, and then uh, load it in the truck, and then run back, get another one, and that's the whole day, yeah. So from morning until twelve o'clock in the uh, in the at noon. So uh, from the morning, uh, we had to report by seven, yeah. So you report at seven, you run the whole time, yeah, until twelve, yeah. So twelve, uh, lunch is not provided. You have to pro you have sort to buy lunch out. yourself. Sort yourself out. So we used to go in a small kibanda, uh, yeah. buy gideri, mm. eat very fast, mm. yeah, then and then go, go back. back to work. So work was, was the salary good though? Salary was not good. Salary was like uh, 200 Kenya shillings per day. Yeah, 200 Kenya shillings per day. So after that tiresome job, so you kind of contemplate, do I take a matatu? Yeah, or do, or I, do I walk? I walk? And you're tired, yeah, really tired. Mm. So I did that job for a couple of weeks and I said, this is not for me. Yeah, so the same vitamin B, actually that vitamin B was very, very helpful, but mm. she helped me in the way that she could. Yes. Yeah, so the same vitamin B told me that, okay, since this job is, uh, is difficult for you, you, you give it up, I'm going to take you somewhere else mm. in the industrial area uh, as well. So um, that, the other job was sorting out maize, mm. yeah, the good from the bad, yeah. So just sitting down you have this uh, big piles of maize so you had to make sure that these piles of maize you have to yeah. finish it by the end of the mm. day yeah so you sit down in the scorching sun and then you had to yeah pick them up one by one yes. yeah sort them out so i did that job it was a very boring job yeah so i did it uh, for like a, a one week and i said no this is not for me i'm not going to do it mm -hmm. 
So um, as time went by, mm. yeah, uh, another cousin of mine also went to Germany uh, to do medicine. Mm -hmm. The brother of uh, Tim Ogutu. Who, yes. uh, so his name is Tom Ogutu. Yeah. Yeah. He also went and then told Tim mm -hmm. my story. Yeah. What I'm going through at yes. the moment. Yeah. And then um, Tim is the one who just gave me a call one day and uh, asked me if uh, I'm uh, if I can do medicine in Germany. Oh. Yeah. So I told him, okay, why not? Yeah. Um, what was your hope still alive? Because sometimes when you are in between these old jobs yeah. and you know my grades read different, mm -hmm. sometimes even that hope starts dimming. Mm -hmm. How was you are still there? Was the spark still there? The spark. Did you still know no matter what I'm going through here, man, I have something in me and I'm going to make it? You know, the spark was still there. I knew mm -hmm. the, oh, there was something better and i knew the because these jobs that I, do, I was doing i was not only doing to survive but i was doing it to save some money yeah to go and do some uh package there was at this time there were lots of packages computer, computer. packages and that's what i wanted to do at the moment mm. now so saving some small money actually i couldn't save because it's too small money and i used to beg my uncle to pay for me uh, these packages but i think he also had his challenges mm. so he couldn't afford them so um i knew that there was something better yeah, I knew there was something better. And uh, going to the streets, you know, you see sometimes that this, uh, the, the bays, I don't know if you know bays. the bays. Yes. Yeah? So if you go back home and you, uh, you, list, you see people who had good grades, they're sitting in the bays for years. Uh, they've been sitting there since you were going to primary school. You have now finished secondary school and they are still there. This is the same people you're sitting down with and, and just uh, mm. debating politics mm. and other stuff. Mm. Someone is just wishing for a white collar job for the last 10 years, yeah, he has not uh, invested in himself or herself and uh, the environment in the base was not good. So I always knew that uh, there was something better, mm. yeah. So when he told me that um, I want to, if I, if I can, if he, when he asked me if I can do medicine, I told him, of course, yes, I want to do medicine. How, so how do I go about it? And then he, he told me that I'll walk you through everything and uh, that's where the journey started. Wow. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that because you are hapo kwa base, unapita unona wase, and then someone is talking to you about going to Germany. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How was that like for you and how did you end up there? Yeah, so the base, uh, that was a difficult time. Yeah. Um, and uh, at some point, my uncle's place became so challenging and uh, there was a lot of drama going on, so I had to relocate. Yeah. And uh, there's also another guy that I have to give him his flowers. He's, um, he's, he was a friend of mine, mm -hmm. huh? actually, we met at the base. And uh, actually, he's the one who told me, okay, if there's so much drama, yeah, um, then uh, you come and live with us. Mm -hmm. So uh, his name is Michael. Mm -hmm. Michael, uh, he's the one also who saved me from that drama. Yeah, and I lived with them for a whole year. Wow. So during the time that uh, I was preparing to go to Germany, mm -hmm. actually, I prepared everything when I was at their place. They mm -hmm. told me, don't clean up the house, don't go to the kitchen, don't do anything. You concentrate on your on your on your studies mm. and uh, at the base of course you all, we always have this misreactions yes. yeah so you sometimes you have friends who will um, uh, encourage you mm. and sometimes you have friends who uh, in their own failures and uh, their own fears they project their fears on, to you yeah so there are some who are telling me ah it's difficult in europe uh, in germany they are skinheads they're going to beat you up over there yeah so there was those kind of discouragements as well yeah, but there were some guys who were very supportful. Actually, Michael was very supportful. Yeah. And there was another guy also called Brian. Uh, he was also very supportful. So actually, Brian and uh, another guy who was working for uh, the guy who was selling clothes, yeah. they're the ones who used to give me fare wow. to go to the German classes. Mm. Yeah. So they used to gather some money, give me the fare. Yeah, you go and study. Good luck. Mm. Wow. Yeah, so my preparation for going to Germany, I did it at Michael's place. Wow. Mm -hmm. So um, going to Germany, uh, one has to uh, learn the language. Yeah, so I was admitted in Gothe Institute. Yeah. So uh, the person who paid for the Gothe Institute was Tim. Yeah, the cousin of mine yes. who invited me to yeah. go to Germany. Yeah. So he had friends as well. And uh, there were medical students at that time. And uh, they used to gather some money and send me the money and pay for my fees, pay for my books, everything that I that I needed for that time. Mm. 
and uh, they are the ones who uh, kind of financed uh, the German uh, the German cars. Um, and uh, for the fair and lunch and everything, I used to get them from my, those mm. friends of mine from the mm. base. It, yeah? it takes a whole. It takes, it takes a whole a, community. It takes a community. Yeah, yeah, it takes a whole community. You cannot do anything by yourself. Mm. Yeah, so um, they are the ones who uh, supported me. So uh, I had to learn German language. Uh, it took me like uh, six months to actually I did it for nine months. Mm. Then applied uh, for um, uh, a bridging course. Yeah, because you cannot go to uh, German university directly if you studied in Kenya. They mm. don't recognize the 844 system fully. Oh. Yeah, so you have to do a bridging course yes. yeah, for one year. So depending on what you want to study, um, you, 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 you do some subjects mm. yeah, that uh, is, uh, is corresponding with what you want to study. Mm. So for like medicine, since I wanted to do medicine, I had to do mathematics. I had to do physics, chemistry, uh, German, and biology. Oh. Everything in German, completely. Mm. So uh, you can imagine I was being taught one plus one is equals to two in German. Yeah. So uh, things like chemistry, I, I used to be very good in chemistry. So uh, names of the of the chemicals. chemical substances, yeah, also have changed. Yeah. So like. Um, in English is oxygen, and in German is Sauerstoff. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sauerstoff. So this, these are the new vocabularies that wow. I had to learn. Yeah, in Germany. Yeah. Are, like studying medicine in Germany, the language, the language. water, Sauerstoff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chakula. Yeah, food, Chak in, food Germany. in German is Essen. Ah, easy. Essen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Food is easy. Food is easy. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I had to learn all these things in German. Yeah. So um, when I was uh, I was uh, studying med uh, or studying German mm. uh, when I was still living in Italy, mm. I used to go to school. Yeah. Go to institute, learn the German. Yeah. And then uh, when I used to go back to the base, I used to avoid the base. So just go somewhere outside the plot, uh, take a chair take a table and then just read German. Mm. I used to just read German because mm. I knew this is the only way out. Yeah. So I read German with my whole and uh, the German classes actually I performed very well. And uh, in, in, uh, in uh, it was called uh, Grundstufe. Yes. Yeah. Grundstufe means like the basics. Yeah. Yeah. Basics one, mm. uh, I, I passed with very high grades. Uh, basic two, passed with very high grades and uh, the other level also with very yes. high grades. No. So, um, yeah, that's uh, I knew that I, that was the only way out. Mm. Yeah, so I, I learned German like I was learning for KCSE. I used to I used to learn German every day. I used yes. to learn. I used to write like I used to read a book in German. Yeah, and then I used to have a dictionary. So what I've learned uh, that day, I used to write it down. Mm. So every day I was learning like twenty new vocabularies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I used to listen to a lot of German stories yes. and everything. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's that's always one challenge. Challenge number one, yeah, learning the language, yeah. So I passed, got my visa, and um, uh, when I got my visa, when I was applying, actually I was uh, accepted in the student colleague, yes, yeah, or accepted to apply before student colleague. Yeah, I was that. gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, student colleague is a bridging course. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a bridging course that yes. you do in a university, yeah, to be able to study okay. in a in a, in a German you. university. Yes. Yeah, so um, yeah, I, I was I applied, yeah, sent my my results mm. and sent my documents mm -hmm. over there, so they accepted me. So before they accept you, uh, you have to do a German uh, a German examination as yeah. well before yeah. they accept you for, again for the student colleagues. Yes. Yeah, so I was admitted to come and do the examination. Yeah, the examination is called uh, Aufnahme Prüfung. Mm -hmm. Aufnahme Prüfung means uh, intake examination. We <laughs> are together, my people. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if you don't pass the intake exam, yes, you're not gonna get into student college. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just learning the German language is yeah. not enough. Okay. Yeah. So you have to pass mm. that intake exam. So um, apply for it. Apply for the intake exam. I got uh, accepted to come to Germany yeah. and do the intake exam. So yes. my, my visa was only valid for three months. Yeah. If you don't pass, yeah, you come back. You either come back or you apply again yes. to, to, to repeat. Yes. Yeah. You apply for another visa to repeat or you apply for another visa to go to a German course. Oh. So the, 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 
the, the visa was only valid for three months. So my, my cousin uh, tripped me up and he told me that this visa is only valid for three months. You have to make sure that this visa, uh, you use it very well. Yeah, because if you, do, if you fail that exam, you're going to back you're going to go back to Kenya. Yes. Yeah, he knew there were options, but yeah. he wanted me to pass mm. the exam. Mm. So I um, uh, got my visa, got my ticket, and uh, my mom, she was uh, very clever. And uh, she knew that one day maybe something might happen, and she had uh, an insurance, a life mm. policy insurance. And in that life pol policy insurance, she left actually back then uh, 600K. Yeah, so back then 600K, that was uh, nine, 2000, the year 2001, mm. uh, 600K was, uh, was good money. So that was the money that I used uh, to book my plane ticket, yes. yeah, and uh, to go and survive in Germany for that short period. Wow. Yeah, and uh, in Germany, uh, before you go to Germany as a student, you have to have an affidavit of support, mm. so somebody has to uh, um, uh, uh, sign for you yes. that you'll be responsible fully mm. or she will be fully responsible mm. uh, for the whole time that mm -hmm. you'll be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I got that from my uncle here in Kenya and uh, the, the 600k, um, we had used some part of it now to book uh, uh, the plane ticket and everything and the ones that are remaining because you have to show the German authorities that mm. you have this 600k yes. yeah, to be able to, so, to for you to survive. So we had a meeting with my uncles and everything. So everybody gathered the money that was remaining. And then I showed them the affidavit of support. Then and you, then you returned, it, the money. returned the money back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that's that's how it went. Um, yeah, so um, booked my plane ticket. That was my first time to board a plane. Mm. Uh, actually, it was Emirates. Yeah. So I had to go from Nairobi to, to Dubai, Dubai. And then from Dubai to, to Dusseldorf, yes. Germany. Yeah. yeah? So in the plane, you know, nobody tells you these things. <laughs> yeah. So that's where the culture shock, yes. uh, culture shock started. started. Yeah. So you find in the plane, you you say you want coffee and everything. They bring coffee. Yes. And uh, they also bring the the the, the small rum, yeah. the milk. Mm. Yeah. So instead of drinking, putting the milk in the coffee, wait. I used to drink the coffee first. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then the milk afterwards, no? Wow. So <laughs> landing in, um, in, in Dusseldorf, yes. um, here is, is summer, yeah? Yes. I think we have the best climate in the world. Yeah. Actually, instead of people going to, to Europe or going to the USA, I think it should be the other way around. Yeah, because we have the best climate, we have the, the best vegetation, we I have agree. the best people, Kenyans. Yes. Uh, when you come to Kenya, when you go back, you go with a true smile, mm. yeah? So um, landing in Dusseldorf, it was winter. Yeah. Yeah. I went in uh, October. Yeah. So October is winter. Yeah. Winter is minus degrees. So at that time is when it was winter was starting, um, and uh, it was like uh, I think two or one degrees. So me, I came with my normal clothes. Yeah. I had a jacket. I was told to buy a jacket, a warm jacket, but. In Kenya, it's not so cold, so I didn't buy a winter exactly. So I didn't buy a winter jacket. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So landing over there, it's, it's like in a fridge. Yeah. So uh, you, in this environment, is very cold. It's very gray. Yeah. There are no greens. Yeah. Everything has has, has gone to hibernation. Yes. Yeah. So that was a fast culture shock. Yeah. So um, I was told to board a train. And uh, I was being, I was given directions and everything. So, you know, these trains in, in, in Germany, they're very modern trains, they're these speedy trains. And um, I was standing there, yeah, at, at the train station and uh, the trains, trains were coming, yes. yeah, and leaving, coming, and leaving, leaving, coming, leaving, coming, leaving. So I was like, okay, these trains are just coming and leaving. Why are they not opening the door for me? What? Yeah, so it was like, these people are so racist. Uh, they're so uh, discriminative. Why are they not opening for me? Oh, wow. Because I'm seeing other people being opened doors for, yeah, but me, they're not opening it for me. So what's happening? Yeah. So uh, my cousin <laughs> gives me a call and he's asking me, where are you? We are waiting for you. Yes. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, there's these trains. There are these trains coming. Uh, they're opening doors for other people, but me, they're not opening for me. What's happening? And then he started laughing and he was like, no, these trains, when you want the door to open, you have to press the button yes. and then the door opens yes. for you. <laughs> so that was another culture shock. Yeah. So I was being 
um, confronted with a lot of culture shocks yeah. now. And now this is a, a, a white nation, yeah, it's Europe, it's Europe. So there's a certain image that the Europeans get uh, from Africa, yeah. You know, this poverty, safari, the Maasai, people living in, 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 the, with, in huts. Hunger, yeah? drought. People living in hunger, drought. So this is the type of information that is being sent to Europe. If you, if you switch on the TV uh, in Europe, you don't get this positive side of, of, of Africa, yeah. So like... Uh, the town of Nairobi, something like a documentary about the town of Nairobi. I've never seen it in a in a German television, on a Euro or a European television. Mm -hmm. So uh, there they have a, a certain image of, of Africans. Now, so you can imagine me going to the university. Yeah, actually, uh, we were in the part where I was admitted for the student colleague. Mm -hmm. Now, so student colleague, uh, I met also other Europeans, uh, Chinese mm -hmm. also as well, uh, people from different nations mm -hmm. uh, who wanted to do. Uh, medicine as mm -hmm. well so uh, that was challenging because now you have to do German I have to do biology yes. I have to do chemistry yeah. physics everything yeah. in German mm -hmm. and um, it was difficult because now the 600k uh, you know Europe life is very expensive uh, at some point uh, it, 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 it was finished yeah. yeah after three months it was gone yeah so I had to search for a job yeah so the job that I, I was given, it was also vitamin B. Yeah, somebody actually organized the job for me. And mm. my first job in Europe was in the restaurant. Yeah, so um, I used to go and wash uh, uh, dishes uh, in the restaurant. And uh, I used to work for four hours after the bridging course. Yes. I used to go to the bridging course in the morning and then uh, go to the work in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I would earn like uh, six euros an, an hour. So that's like uh, six, 600, 600 per hour. Mm. Yeah, so that was 24 in uh, euros in a day. So that was 24 euros in a day. So if you round it up in a month, it was coming to 400, mm. 400 euros. Mm. So that's like 40K. Mm. And you know, I have to pay um, uh, rent. Uh, I have to buy food. Yeah, I have to buy my internet subscription. I have to buy my telephone subscription. Uh, so 400 euros was not enough and I had to also yeah, take care of my sister back home. So I had to send home as well. I had to pay for her school fees and everything. So I used to, I used to uh, kind of survive with that 400 euros. So, yeah. you know, life is not easy in mm. Europe. Now it's, uh, it's chop chop. Mm. And uh, things are very expensive also you over there. You lose. Yes. Mm. So um, I used to uh, go in the morning to school then go to work and mm. then in the in the evening mm. i used to go do homework and everything yeah. and uh, and uh, that that was the time uh, uh, that was the life during that one year in student college mm. and you have to pass exams because if you don't pass exams you don't go to the next level and you you, you might also be taken back home because mm. if you're you've not fulfilled your purpose yeah if you don't pass the exams mm. so that time was was very challenging and um uh, but the job uh, saved me a lot because I was able to do things. I was able yeah. to finance myself and all that. So I did the bridging course, uh, passed it, um, right. and uh, they took the average. Yes. Yeah? They took my 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 uh, my remarks. Yes. Or how do you call marks. it? Marks. My marks. Mm. Uh, and then they added it to the marks that I got in Kenya, yes. and then they divided by two. They take the average. Yes. So with that average is what you can apply for medical school in mm. Germany. So I applied and uh, actually I got uh, three invitations in three different universities, wow. yeah. So I got um, an invitation in Frankfurt, it's a town in Germany, one yeah. of the biggest. Yeah. And I uh, got an invitation in, uh, in Leipzig, it's the east side of mm -hmm. Germany, mm -hmm. uh, but east side of Germany is so, yes. it's not so popular. Yeah. yeah. And I got an invitation in Bonn, the former capital city mm -hmm. of, of Germany. Mm -hmm. So since I was living in Münster and in Bonn, um, the difference was only two hours drive, yeah. And uh, in Bonn is the only place that they used to offer a, 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 a ceremony, a graduation ceremony, oh. where you wear the hat and the gown and everything. Yes. In Germany, they don't do that. It's oh. only in Bonn yes. where they offer that uh, yeah. graduation ceremony. So I said, okay, my dream was also to wear that hat. Wow. Yeah, so that's where I'm going, yeah. So um, I got admission. So now another challenge came. Yeah, I had to move, relocate from yeah. Münster to and Bonn. then go to Germany, mm. uh, then go to Bonn. Mm. Yeah, and finding a house is not so easy. Yeah, you have to apply, you have to uh, do an interview, uh, and also you have to get a job. Yes. Yeah, 
So I applied for different houses. I was not getting any response, no positive response. Mm. And I was applying for jobs and I was also not getting positive responses. And um, um, I had to uh, contact a friend of mine. Uh, actually, one guy also who I have to give a lot of flowers mm. is called uh, Pato. Mm. Uh, Pato, he lives in Cologne. Mm. Uh, he's the one who I stayed with for six months. For that time that yeah. I didn't have a job and yeah. for all that time that I didn't have a place to stay. Wow. So he made sure that I was I was good to go. So you say it, it takes a whole community. community, a whole team for you to be able to, su- to be successful. Yes. That's why I have to give them their flowers, their flowers mm-hmm. now when they're still here. Good. So I have to give them the, I have to give them their shout good. out. Good. So Pato is the one who made sure that I was good. Yeah. During that time that mm-hmm. I started university. Mm. So um Studying in the, in the University of Bonn, so um, I ended up getting a job in the call center. Yeah. So I had to call people in the market research and call them, how satisfied are you with this and this and this? Yeah. Some people used to listen, some people used to hang up, and we were being paid per hour. So that's the money that I used to be able to finance myself mm. with. And uh, now this is med school, like I was saying initially, there's a different type of image that uh, the Europeans have. Yeah, it's not their fault, but I think this is by design. The media shows Africa to be a very uh, poor place, very dry place, very dangerous place. So all of a sudden they see this African, yeah, who's coming to study medicine and we were not many in our, in our semester. So we were like only three Africans. Wow. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of pre- prejudice, no? So it was not easy to make German friends. Yeah, so I can remember uh, you go to the university and uh, when you get assignments and you get an assignment as a team, the Germans will kind of isolate themselves yeah, from the others. And then you, you had to find somebody else who's left out and then you, you, you do the assignments with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was prejudice. So all of a sudden they're like, okay, this African, I don't think uh, he's knowledgeable enough. Huh? Let, me, let, me, let me get together with my other uh, European colleagues mm-hmm. and, and we do this assignment. No? So that was prejudice. There was a lot of prejudice. And in Germany, there were, there were some questions that they used to ask, like, uh, what's your name? Uh, where do you come from? Uh, how comes you can speak good German? And uh, do you think at some point you'll be ready to go back to your home? Because the, at your place, they also need you as a doctor. Yeah. So these were standard questions. Yeah, I don't blame them, It's, but I think it's by design. But what do yeah? you mean you don't blame them? Like here when they're here in Kenya, we don't ask them, hello, how are you? Uh, how come you can speak good Swahili? When do you think you will go back to Australia or wherever because we are people? I think in Africa, we are very accommodating. In we Africa, will not ask such questions. Yes, in Africa, we are very accommodating. But I think in Africa, there's also a lot of brainwash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you see... Uh, people from Europe, if you see people from these other uh, developed countries, uh, we tend to kind of worship, kind of worship them That's more, the word, listen actually. to them more. Yeah, yes. it's, it's it's brainwashing, <coughs> yeah. it's, and it's media. Uh, if you look at the media, when you when you switch on the TV, you only see positive images of Europe. Mm-hmm. You don't know that there is poverty in Europe as well, or in the in the in the USA. There are some countries in Europe that there is more poverty than in Africa. No? Did you not feel like, okay, I just don't think I can survive in such an environment personally. Like, it takes too much it takes too from much. the you, you from your spirit. Exactly. It's too much energy. People thinking you're not good enough, exactly. you're not intelligent, or you're not supposed to be here. It's going to take a lot of energy. It, from... takes, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of focus, and a yeah. lot of motivation. Because apart from prejudice, you're also experiencing culture shock. And you're also experiencing uh, economic problems because I couldn't uh, I, I couldn't afford at that time to go to the canteen and also buy food because the, the Germans uh, they used to be paid everything for for the pa- from the parents yeah so you can imagine at the end of the semester um, the semester is done you're tired you're worn off yeah but the Germans they they they're paid for holidays they're going to Maldives they're going to Spain they're going everywhere. So they, they go and when they come back, they're fresh again. But you, during that time when the semester is off, during holidays, that's when you want to go and work and compensate yeah, for the economical deficits. Mm. So when you come back <laughs> uh, uh, from, uh, from the holidays, yeah, the Germans, they ask you, so what did you do for your holidays? And I was like, I was working. Yeah, then they say they were in Spain, uh, they, they were in, uh, in Italy, they had a nice time. Yeah? So you're more worn out than the time the semester ended. 
Yeah, so those are the also the types yes. of challenges that that uh, uh, the medical uh, people experience, mm -hmm. and it's not easy. You have to have a lot of focus because there are so many people who went had good grades, passed the shooting colleague, got admitted, yes. yeah, to medical school or mm -hmm. other other fields, mm -hmm. but they didn't manage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they ended up uh, uh, dropping out. Yeah, dropping out and searching for other purposes, and uh, during that time also. You know, it's it depends on who you you meet, yeah. When you go to Europe, yeah. Because me, I met a good group, yeah. My cousin was already there, established, and I had a lot of, a lot of inspiration from him. And uh, there are also another group, like I can remember, there was a, um, a cafeteria, uh, there was a, a pub called mm. Jumbo mm. Pub. Uh, it's the only African pub in Munster. And when you go there, you find people with uh, with their wives, with their European wives, and everything. Uh, and they were like telling me, huh, you think you're going to study and get a job? Yeah, you're going to study, finish, and you're not going to get a job. So you search for yourself a, a big mama over here. Yeah. And then just get married and life goes on. Oh. Yeah. So those are the kind of also discouragement I was also getting along mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. But um, you have to stay focused. Yeah. So me, I maintain the focus. And even the time that I couldn't afford this and this and this and this and that, I said, okay. I know the end of the road. Uh, I know how it looks like on the other side. So whatever is happening uh, uh, yes. during this time, yes. yeah, I know I'm going to make it. And mm -hmm. once I make it, that's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, to curb the economic strains, I had to uh, re-strategize. So the first job that I got in the hospital was in the, in the intensive care unit as a student. Mm -hmm. Back then, I was still uh, studying medicine. Mm -hmm. And it was very intensive. I was so desperate to get a job and I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't have experience uh, in intensive care unit. I didn't even know how to spread the bed yeah, for, for, for the patients because uh, it was a requirement that you have to have worked in another ward mm. yeah, for you to be able to work in the intensive mm. care unit. And you can imagine these are patients in critical conditions and you have to be very careful. Yes. Yeah? So my desperation drove me yeah, to get the job in the intensive care unit. So there, there were challenges in the beginning, but I did it. Mm -hmm. yeah? So that was a job that I, ma I maintained for a couple of years. And I had to re-strategize because it, it, takes a, it drains a lot of energy. So you go to the lectures, you also have to pass exams. In med school yeah? in Germany, you have exams like on a weekly basis. Yeah? Anatomy, you have to learn everything about the human body, you have to learn everything. So um, I had to re-strategize and uh, my strategy was, and that's the same strategy that I use up to today. Um, the thing that people are lacking, yeah, to be able to be successful compared to others is time. Yeah, so you can imagine uh, I wake up at six in the morning, prepare myself, take breakfast, have to be uh, at the lectures at 7.30 or at eight, then go for lectures until lunchtime, yes. yeah, and then eat lunch. And then in the afternoon, I have to go to work. And then the work will go up to 10 o'clock mm. in the evening. Mm. So when you come back home, you're worn off, yeah, you don't have enough energy to go and, and uh, study anything. And even if you get a chance to study anything, you're so tired, uh, you cannot concentrate as such. Mm. So the thing that I realized is very important is the time. What I was lacking was time. So. There were people who were telling me, some friends of mine, some colleagues, yeah. they were telling me, oh, this semester is very difficult. There's physiology, there's anatomy in this semester. So you have to um, uh, yeah, postpone exams. Yeah. So there are so many Africans, so many uh, people from other countries who are postponing exams. Yeah? And uh, I told them that I'm not going to postpone any exam. Yeah? The thing that you people lack is time. So I'm going to create time. So instead of waking up at six in the morning, I used to wake up at four. Okay, so go. I, um, I uh, remember the strategy that we used to use yes. in Miranda yes. uh, High School. Yeah, in Miranda, when we were preparing for exams, we used to wake up at four. Yeah. So I used to wake up at four, make sure that I learn for three hours. Yeah. And then after learning for three hours, um, I would go for lectures and I would go for my job, yeah, go to my workplace without any stress mm. because every day I'm gaining three hours. Yeah. So that is a strategy that I, that I, that applied. I, I applied. Mm. And that's what helped me pass exams uh, every single time. Yes. So this, this African now is passing exams every single time. 
Yeah, so people are wondering. So that's when you start getting friends. Okay, how did you do that? So when during examinations, uh, they used to call me, come and sit here next to us. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, that's the strategy that I use and mm. uh, that's what made me pass uh, exams and that's what made me uh, to, to finish med school mm. in, in good time yes. under those conditions. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. You know, you. when you say it, it might sound easy, <laughs> but it's not easy. Yeah, it's, it's not a easy. a lot of work and commitment yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and sleepless nights. And I, you've, you know, you've spoken about something very interesting, time. Time, yeah. Time, mm -hmm. you know. And I know Arnold Schwarzenegger uses the same analogy. Mm -hmm. You do have 24 hours in a day. Yes. Even mm -hmm. if you say you will sleep for 12 hours. Yes. You still have 12 more hours. 12 more hours. What are you doing in exactly. those 12 hours? Exactly. So thanks for that. Yeah. Yes, yes. So that's the same strategy that I use mm -hmm. even up to date. Mm -hmm. And that is what has made me to gain a lot of knowledge. Yes. Yeah. Uh, compared to, to the rest. And that's mm -hmm. what propelled me in my career ladder. Uh, to to at a young age, yeah, to be the chief uh, senior chief consultant in uh, neuroimmunology. Um, you can imagine now in this environment where people come, other people come fast now nah, normally, but now you get calls, people asking you to be to be to run their 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 departments and everything. So. Um, that's the strategy that I use even up to today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, after finishing med school mm -hmm. in Germany, um, I worked in Germany as well. So yeah. I decided to um, major in neurology. Yeah. Uh, initially, I wanted to do neurosurgery, just like my cousin. Mm -hmm. But I went to the uh, uh, I went to the uh, operation uh, field, and I saw that the the conditions. Yeah, you stand for long hours. Yes. You dirtify yourself. I didn't yes. want to get dirty. Yeah. Yeah. So I decided to do neurology. Yeah. So during neurology, um, I did neurology for five years uh, in, in, in Germany. The conditions were harsh. Doctors' conditions mm. in Germany, there is not, it's not so easy, it's harsh. Yes. So uh, at some point, we had to do 24-hour shifts. So imagine you're going to, you're reporting to work, and then you have to work for 24 hours. You come back home the next day, yeah? But if there's any emergency, you have to react, you have to concentrate, you have to focus, and you have wow. to save lives. Yeah. So you can imagine a patient, you're tired, you've seen a lot of patients, and then you try to go to sleep, mm. and then you get a call all of a sudden, there's mm. an acute stroke. Mm. Yeah. So you have to wake up, yeah? go and take care of that stroke, save, save that person's yes. life. Yeah? So that was a challenging time, but I gained a lot of experience. Mm. Yeah? And uh, using my strategy of waking up very early in the morning, yeah. that's what I used to do. So I was being favored because I had a lot of information. So I was being pushed to different departments. And that's how my rotation, I managed to do my rotation within five years. Mm. Most of the people, they take six, seven years. Some people even take eight years. Yeah. Yeah? So I rotated very quick, Yeah, finished my uh, specialization in neurology in Germany. And then uh, since the conditions in Germany, they were a little bit harsh and there was another option. Yeah. Uh, the option was Switzerland. Yeah, there were so there are so many Germans relocating from Germany, going to Switzerland to go and do medicine yes. and other people go do nursing. Yeah. So um, I inquired about Switzerland. Yeah, there's a friend of mine also who went from Germany to Switzerland to yeah. do pharmacy. So yeah. he's the one who encouraged me to go to Switzerland and, and do continue my career mm. in Switzerland. Mm. So um, in Switzerland, I applied for a job, yeah, and uh, I got a job. And um, actually, I was very young, and uh, I had just finished my specialization, and uh, I got a, a job offer for for to become a senior consultant as a neurologist, yeah, in the hospital of Bill. Wow. Yeah, and there was a project that I started in the hospital of Bill, yeah, to do neuroimmunology and uh, do infusion uh, therapies mm -hmm. for pay, uh, mm. chronic patients. Yes. So I managed it and I also kind of propelled it to another level. And, uh, and uh, I, I, I did it so well, but the co conditions, they were not so good because I was seeing that I was bringing a lot of uh, uh, money. Yes. Huh? Uh, and getting to, not much in and return. not getting uh, back in return the yes. way I was supposed to get it. Mm. Nah? So I discussed with the chief because I knew my worth. Uh, <laughs> speak about it and speak about it strongly. You knew your worth. I knew my worth. W what is it with people feeling like me talking about my worth will make me look like I'm proud or I shouldn't even? 
you know, people are very uh, desperate, yeah, because, you know, the school system prepares you to work for somebody else. The school system doesn't prepare you to be, to be independent for yourself. So uh, people uh, rely on these jobs and people are very scared to speak up, yeah, because so many people, they're just one salary away from poverty. So if the institution tells you there's no salary this month, yeah, you, you, you don't have means to pay for your yes. salary and everything. Yeah. And people are afraid of losing their job. Mm -hmm. So they're like, OK, if I now go and demand for this salary, I'm going to lose my job. They're going to yes. take somebody yes. else. So that's one thing that is making people or hindering people to speak up. Mm. Yeah. But I would encourage anybody to, to, to be able to speak up yes. because you have to know your worth. Yeah. yeah. Because so many institutions, they take advantage of people. Mm. Yeah. Because people don't know their worth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people are not uh, ready yes. to speak up. True. Yeah. So I spoke up with this boss and I told him that uh, I'm bringing this value yeah, to the institution, but I'm not getting the, the, the return that I have to get yes. yeah, in correlation with my value. So he was like, yeah, you know, you just started the other day and all that. Uh, for you to be able to get this amount, you have to continue working here for five years. And I told him, no, five years is a long time. Yeah. I, I, I need my returns. Yeah. So I s there was a friend of his, actually the, 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 the private practice yes. that I'm working in right now. Um, I'm working in two institutions. Yes. Yeah, I'm working oh. in the private practice, neuros, uh, it's called Neurocentrum Bill, yes. uh, the Neurology Center of Bill mm -hmm. and Neurology Center of, of Bern. Yeah. So there's this one guy who runs, uh, it's, it's his private practice mm -hmm. now, so he's uh, employing doctors. And uh, he's the one who actually gave me a call because I had made a good name for myself in the region of Bern, the capital city. Yes. Um, and uh, my name was becoming uh, popular as time went by. And he just gave me a call. And he's like, are you interested in working uh, in a private practice? Mm. And uh, actually I was kind of hesitant because mm. I was, uh, at some point I was also in my comfort zone because the salary that I was getting was not so bad. It was uh, actually a very good salary of a senior consultant in Switzerland. But I knew there was much the better. The Kenyan <laughs> is tempted to ask how much is good salary in those countries? I mean, like um, per month. For a doctor, the average, for you to be able to survive in, in Switzerland, you need a, a minimum of 3,000 Swiss francs. That's 300,000 yes. uh, 300, Kenyan shillings. But don't forget that life in Switzerland is expensive. Yes. Yeah, rent is expensive. Food and beverages is expensive. So with that 3,000, you cannot survive, you cannot save. Mm. Yeah, you cannot save a lot. Yeah. You can just manage to pay your bills. Mm. What's yeah? your category, Doc? <laughs> Mine is, uh, I, neg I negotiated my... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I negotiated my salary. Yeah. I'm not going to say exactly how much I earn. Yes. But uh, I negotiated my salary because uh, when I was leaving the hospital, yeah. Um, you know, it was a very funny uh, conversation. So I told him I'm leaving. I find a better option. I'm going to a private practice. And he was like, now he knew that, okay, they're losing value. Yeah. So he was like, so just write me an amount that you want to be paid per month. So, you know, me, my mind was already made up. Mm. Yeah. I knew there was something better over yes. there. So I write there an amount and it was like, okay, let me see that amount. So that was like the double of what yes. I was earning. Yes. Yeah. So he looks at the amount and he says, okay, give me three days. Yeah. So I was also going for holidays in, in, uh, in Netherlands. Mm. So I went for a, ho I booked a holiday for one week and I went with my family for, for, for a holiday in, yeah. in, just to cool down. Yes. Yeah. So this guy was calling me every day. Yeah. Asking me. Yeah. So he was like, I will manage for you to get that salary that you demanded. Yeah. So now uh, what, what's, what's your take? What do you, are you coming? Are you coming? Are you uh, still staying with us? Yeah. And I didn't want to pick up his calls. Yeah. Because um, you have to know your value and uh, your value cannot be revealed only when you're living. You so for out of principles, out of my own principles, I said, I'm not going to take that money. I'm going to the other side. Yeah. So going to the other side is when I negotiated my salary. Good. Yeah. And negotiating my salary, it, it depends on the value that I bring. And uh, so um, at the end of the month, yeah, you know. I love that. <laughs> know your worth. Yeah. You have to know your worth. Yes. You have to know your worth. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. 
So now I'm working in the private practice yes. and um, uh, I've uh, increased the value of that private practice and uh, uh, the, 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 the goal yeah, is to take over that private practice. Mm. Yeah, so uh, the guy was uh, very, very, or he's very, very, um, he's very convinced yes. that I can uh, take over that private practice mm. and uh, maintain a good uh, uh, medical care. Yeah. So I'm going to take the practice and I'm going to run it myself. That is it. Yeah, that so is that's the, beautiful. That's the main goal. That, that's, that's the main the goal. goal. Yeah, you that's gotta the goal. Keep, you're going to keep growing. Exactly. You can't be in your comfort exactly, zone. Exactly. Yeah. I would urge the Kenyan government and also the medical board to make it easy for the diasporans to be able to come back and apply the experience and the knowledge and the, and the, and the capital that they have yes. and, and invest it yeah, in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Because um, without the diasporans, because what I used to see even in, in, uh, in Germany when I was studying mm -hmm. medicine, mm -hmm. they used to give scholarships. I'm not saying that the Kenyan government should not issue scholarships, but the Chinese, the South Koreans, yeah, the Indonesians, the, the people from Thailand, they used to get uh, scholarships and they used to come and uh, study everything. They used to keep the notes, each and every material, and they used to, when they get some experience, they go back. Yeah. And they were, they, it was mandatory they go back. Yeah. And they used to apply this knowledge and experience back to their countries. That's why the Chinese, that's why the Indonesians, that's why the Malaysians, that's why they are rising up. Yeah, because they use they, they went, got experience where it's uh, it was developed compared mm, to them, mm. and then brought that experience back. Mm -hmm. But you see, the Kenyan, uh, the Kenyan, the country, our Kenyan country, they it's kind of this kind some kind of repellence, yeah, from the diaspora yes. for the diaspora. Yeah, you know? I know I've not touched on a lot of a lot of diaspora stories, mm -hmm. but. How is the Kenya community in Switzerland and what are some of the challenges mm. that they face? Mm -hmm. And uh, do we actually think when we are looking from this side that life is easy for you when it's actually pretty hard sometimes? You know, um, like I said, the media yeah, portrays Europe to be uh, something else, yeah? like heaven. So even me before going to Europe, I used to think that in Europe money is easily available and uh, people are rich, everybody's rich, everybody's a millionaire, but that's not the case. Yeah? Uh, there are challenges uh, also in Europe, people, people are struggling. Yeah? So there are some people who, like the, the community in Kenya, let's mm. say in Switzerland, mm. there are people who have money, there are people who are well, set who are well settled, there are people, um, uh, but there are people who are also struggling. Yeah, people who cannot invest back home, mm. uh, but they're trying the best what they can do to 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 make ends meet mm. and uh, to make the best out of their lives over there. So uh, they, there are many communities that are being formed. Uh, like in Switzerland, we have the Swiss uh, Switzerland Kenyan organization, mm -hmm. SKO, yes. uh, where Kenyans meet, we have sports day, we have everything, we mingle. You know, people have meetings on, on a quarterly, yearly basis. Uh, so it's kind of tight. Yes. Yeah. But what I realized with the diasporans in Kenya, people wish you happy birthdays, people wish you uh, uh, best of luck in uh, lots of things that you're doing. Um, when somebody has a relative who has died and everything, people come together mm -hmm. and uh, they kind of uh, gather money and uh, uh, you, you, you're you being held financially in mm -hmm. those kind of mm -hmm. situations. So mm -hmm. When somebody at home, you have a relative who is sick, People come, come and through. gather easily and mm. come through mm -hmm. and help you out. Mm. But what I realize is that when you want now to go to the next level, now if you have invested in something or if you're starting your own business, like I know a Kenyan who opened up a restaurant, a Kenyan restaurant in Switzerland, the Kenyans were not going to support him. Yeah. So when it comes to somebody supporting you, yeah, your business so that wow. you can earn some bread, yeah, from your business it's now becomes hard. difficult. The Kenyans who support uh, Kenyans in diaspora mostly are the Kenyans who are back at home. Yeah, like you see now, I have a, I have an apartment. You do? Yes, I have an apartment at the coast. Yes. Yeah, it's in a very nice, uh, beautiful beach resort at the Sultan Palace. Yes. It's called Hayes 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 Residence. Yes. But you see, the 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 community that I have, not anyone has stepped in that apartment. The people who are coming to that apartment are strangers, people who I don't know, yeah? 
and it's very well furnished. Uh, you have a lot of services over there, but the Kenyans, they'd rather not support you a business. They can support you when somebody is dead. They can support you when somebody is sick, but they don't practice group economics. And that is what is keeping us as Africans down. We don't practice group economics. Instead of buying milk from Netherlands, why don't I buy milk from uh, Tanzania? Why don't I buy milk from, from Uganda? Uganda. Hmm? Why don't we trade amongst ourselves? Yeah? That is what is lacking in, in, wow. in the African, and that is what is lacking in the Kenyans in diaspora. What, what are you guys in diaspora doing to bridge that gap? Um, it's not easy to penetrate the minds of people. I think, I don't know if it's brainwash. I don't know if it's a post-traumatic uh, poverty syndrome. Mm. I call it post-traumatic poverty syndrome because um, you can find even family members not supporting themselves. Yeah, financially in this in this in this direction, you can see the Indians. No, when the Indians come and set up a shop over here, you find the person who uh, the people who are employed are just Indians. It's a family thing, and the Indian from that person uh, from that other side will mm. come to the Indian and mm. support that Indian's business. Mm. But Kenyans, it's it's very difficult uh, over there uh, to be supported uh, in that way. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, we are trying to make vlogs, we're trying to make people understand that group economics is, is important and this is the way to go, but uh, it, will take, it will take a generation mm. to do that. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. yes, I want to deal on investing back home mm -hmm. because you've mentioned that you have an apartment yes. and as I said, even as we started this episode, it's powered by King's Developers mm -hmm. Limited mm -hmm. and the reason I went into this partnership with them is because I want to create awareness yes. because a lot of people in diaspora are being duped into investing yes. back mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. What are some of the key things that maybe two or three that you would ask Kenyans in diaspora to look out for before they invest mm -hmm. here back home, given mm -hmm. that even you yourself you own a property right now yeah, you see uh, for kenyans in diaspora they've been duped a lot yeah they've been taken advantage of a lot you see um when the kenyans who are here at home uh, look at diasporans they think that diasporans have a lot of money yes they're far away and it's easy to dupe them financially yeah so uh, before we invested uh, in kenya we also had some deals we also tried some in, uh, some investments and we lost some money yeah there was a time my wife wanted to open up a salon at the coast in mombasa and we gathered uh, some money yeah we had a capital of mm. one million kenya shillings yeah we used to send to this guy yeah to upgrade the place and everything and the guy disappeared, disappeared with the money yeah and that's why so many kenyans are very hesitant yeah to uh, invest back home yeah because there are not so many people they can mm. trust you can find somebody wanting to invest yeah and sending money to the relatives actually the relatives are the worst yeah so you find uh, somebody sending money to the relatives so the relatives is sending a picture mm. uh, of somebody else's house yes. so you think your house is being built so when you come to check your house there's nothing only maybe the foundation. So maybe many Kenyans have been duped and that's why they're very hesitant. And yes. they, I think financially they would have been uh, doing very well mm. and both parties would have profited. Yes. But there are some people who have myo myopia. Yeah, they, they, they don't think ahead. Yeah, so they think, okay, if I have this deal, how much can I make for myself? Mm. And that's the problem that mm. we people in the diaspora are experiencing. But if you get somebody who's trusted, yeah, like if you do your due diligence and you see the company is uh, is, is, is mm. trusted yes. and the company is very competent, mm. uh, there are some people who have invested with companies that are very competent yes. and they're they are making it. Mm. And actually, if you see the lots of investments that are being done in Kenya, they're being done by by Europeans. Yes. Yeah, they're being, they, if you go to Malindi, Indians. all those hotels uh, mm. they are they are they are owned by uh, Italians. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I would urge people not to be scared yeah, mm. to invest in Kenya. The mm. returns in Kenya are much better compared to returns in Europe. Yes. Yeah? And uh, there's nothing as good as investing back home. Mm. Yeah? Because if you invest back home, you're providing jobs mm. yeah, to Kenya. Yes. And there's nothing as good as providing job to your own people. Ah, that's beautiful. Yeah? And uh, also investing in a place because I am not going to spend all of my life in Europe. There's no way I'm going for retirement in Europe. It's another environment. It's a different uh, uh, culture altogether, yeah. Because my goal uh, is for me and my wife and my kids to come back 
yeah at some point okay the kids they can study and do all that yes. uh, when they are when they're adults they mm. can decide to come back to Kenya mm. or not but mm. us we have decided that this is a place that we're going to retire Good. because there's a certain uh, connection that we have uh, with yeah. Kenya because it's our home this is uh, home anywhere you go home east or west home, home is the best. Is best yeah yeah that's beautiful and I, I'm so really proud of you and I hope one day I can also get to cover a different perspective, yes. especially of the beautiful amenities that you also have. Yes. Mm -hmm. I hope one day can be able to show people what you have going on, because yes. mm -hmm. it's a it's a beautiful moment for you, given yes, that uh, where you've come from. Yes, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. yes. Looking back, this young boy from Italy to becoming a top you know, medical practitioner mm -hmm. in, you know, through Germany and Switzerland. Yes. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? And what do you tell yourself? It makes me feel proud. Um, the journey was not easy, of course. Yeah. But uh, uh, if one keeps focus, uh, focus, 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 one will get through. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes me really proud. And it makes me also, I've also helped a lot of people with the information. Yes. Uh, uh, my YouTube channel, I tell a lot of people about information, how mm. to get this and this and this mm. and that. Uh, but I feel I feel fulfilled. I feel proud. Good. So that's not my end goal. My end goal is to uh, create also some medical facilities for Kenya so that yes. the facility, the Kenyans can also enjoy yes. uh, what what we uh, medical people mm. in Kenya provide as well. I have yes. a cousin of mine. He's called Daniel Ogutu. Yeah. Uh, he lives in Germany and yes. also practice, practices in Germany. And he is actually providing medical services for free for Kenyans. It's called uh, Doki's Advice. Mm. So if you have a medical condition, yeah, you can just what or you can just contact him on WhatsApp, wow. and he'll give you that uh, consultation for free. Wow. And actually, sometimes they have camps. Uh, him and uh, my cousin mm. Timo Gutu, mm. yeah, and they go, uh, they do the camps and treat people for free. That's beautiful. Yeah, do neurosurgical procedures for free. Yeah, yeah, do medical service procedures mm. for free. Mm. So people are trying to uh, give back give to the back, society, which is yeah? nice. People have their hearts in Kenya. Yes, yeah, and they're trying each and every way that they can, they can, yeah, to reconnect, yeah, uh, with the people back home and provide their services back home because yeah. something is lacking. I'm not saying that Kenya has a poor uh, medical uh, system, yeah, but compared to the rest of the world, uh, there's some improvements that have to be done. That have to yeah, be done. That has to be done. Yes. And, uh, and it will be good to bridge up that gap. Good. Yes. Do, before we, I wind up, mm -hmm. do some people think you are young to have accomplished what you've accomplished? So many people. So many people. Even when I go for medical advisory boards uh, with the pharma industries and also with people who are doing research, um, I'm, I always look the youngest. Yes. And uh, at some point, uh, people kind of like, who's this young guy? Who's this young African guy? Uh, what does he have to offer? So until you open your mouth and speak and they listen to what you're saying, that's when they realize, okay, this is, not, this is a guy to reckon with. Yeah, so I get that uh, uh, so many times. Yes. So many times. So many times. Yeah, and even with my hair mm. and everything, people yes! are like, this, this doctor, who's this kind of doctor? But dressed like this, dressed hair like, like this. this. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 but it's it's my African hair. Mm. Mm, it's my African hair. Some time along the line, I think due to brainwash, the African thought the hair that he has is not so good. That's why you have ladies uh, buying wheels, spending a lot of billions. It's a billion dollar business. Uh, buying these weaves from from Indians and Chinese and all that, and uh, the the male African was told your hair is rough, it's ugly, you cut it off. That's why you have people cutting off their hair, but actually it's beautiful hair that we have. And if you can imagine, I don't know if you know this, but the Europeans, yeah, they kind of want to have our hair. Yeah, when they look at our hair, they touch it, they say this is very nice hair. So we are the ones who think that this kind of hair, this is very rough, this is um, not Adi. serious, no? but uh, it's our beautiful hair that we have. Our pride. It's our pride. Our pride. And that's why you find also uh, the African is naming himself a European name. Yeah, You have somebody called Tom, but it's not our ancestors' names. Yeah, It's brainwash. Mm -hmm. So you find people who are high-profile Africans, mm. yeah. You find like somebody like Uhuru Kenyatta, yeah. You find Raila Odinga, you find Chinua Achebe, uh, Wangari, Wangari Mathai. Nah, these are people who realize, okay, I don't need this European name. Yeah, we have our African names that we should, we should be proud of. That's why uh, we named our daughter Zuena Makena. Mm. It's a Kenyan name. Mm. Yeah, 
uh, I didn't want my daughter or my kids to have European names because Europeans don't also have the uh, Kenyan names. Mm. Yeah, they name them the kids their own their own names. Yeah, and I think that's where we need to come back and develop our countries because in some people might also say you are speaking the white man's language. Yes, you are doing the white man's job. Yes, you are working in a white man's country. Yes. why mm -hmm. can't you come and do that? Yes. in your own. Yes, but mm. you see, so many people want to come back and do stuff but you see the the government and also the environment is not so conducive for mm. people to come back yes you find people not being supported yeah to be able to come back mm. coming back to kenya relocating to kenya is not as easy as it sounds and even getting a job in a hospital as a medical doctor it's not easy. it's not easy yes mm -hmm. thank it's not you. easy it's not easy it's not easy it's difficult yes. it's difficult yeah thank mm -hmm. you and as i said you did promise me you would give me a different episode on nutrition yes because i think it's good to hear it from your perspective but congratulations yeah, for all you. the things that you've achieved thank you uh, congratulations for just following your dream because i feel like the more we grow up the more diverted we are to what our vision is Yes. And sometimes the discouragement is a lot. Destruction. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I look mm. now at you, that person, when people were like, what is he doing here mm -hmm. to becoming one of the top people in that place? So mm -hmm. kudos to you. Yeah. Yes. But not mm -hmm. everyone might be that focused or encouraged, and some people have given up. Yes. So maybe as a parting shot, what would you want to tell them? And also, where can our lovely audience find you? Maybe you can look at that camera. Okay, so what I would say is that it all starts with the imagination. So um, if you want to, if you have a goal of losing weight, uh, there's a way that you have to already imagine yourself to look like. If you're a man, you want those six packs. If you're a lady, you want that uh, uh, flat, flat tummy. tummy. Uh, so it all starts with imagination. And uh, imagination, without imagination, you cannot reach your goals without mm. imagination. Mm -hmm. And believe me, imagination is for free all for yes. free so there's nothing that is keeping you away from imagining and if you yes. can imagine be focused and know your value know your worth you reach everything that you want to reach yes and know that time uh, is always limited you have less time we've spoken about that but if you want to be successful mm. if you want to gain uh, knowledge uh, create time uh, yes. so instead of waking up at six in the morning uh, and hustling with the traffic and all that afterwards and then you don't have time for yourself you have to make time for yourself yes make sure that you wake up two hours or three hours before time imagine if you're waking two or three hours before time for the whole year imagine the amount of hours that you've gained yes so know your value know your worth and uh yeah everything is possible mm -hmm. and no one should discourage you from getting or uh, achieving your goals at yes. all so yeah tap in and uh, keep that in mind mm. and you'll be successful yeah where can they find you yes uh, me and my wife we have a youtube channel uh, where you get uh, all the information yes. uh, we have information about medicine we mm. have information about nutrition we have information about traveling the world we have information about almost yeah uh, lots of topics that yes. we can speak about over yes. there but if you want uh, information about medicine specific information you can just uh, uh, check us out on uh, hayes family uh, at YouTube and uh, this you can also if you feel like you want something to be spoken about yes. just write it on my DM on our yes. DM and then we can speak about it okay but that's where you can find us yes. Hayes family at YouTube exactly exactly mm -hmm. thank you doc even for making time yes I know it's not been an easy you know morning jet lagged and everything <laughs> <laughs> so Nashukuru, I yeah. don't take it for granted and thank you so much for inspiring our audience. Okay, I really do you. appreciate this conversation. It's very it's very light, it's very inspirational and people can be able to pick one or two things from here and continue moving towards their purpose. Yes. So good luck as you enjoy your vacation here yes, in Kenya. And, um, I would like to give you also your flowers. You know, this is a big platform. Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> For me to travel all the way, 13 hours at night, yeah, having not have rested enough. Now, nah? actually, we landed yesterday in the morning at 7:20. Yeah. We yeah. reached the hotel at 10, and uh, we had to also do some other stuff yes. before we went back to sleep. Yeah, and we didn't sleep enough. Yeah. Now, nah? uh, for us to 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 have to make it also today, that means the platform is a big platform. Oh, I appreciate and, uh, it. And we also have to give you your flowers because you. what you're doing is a good job. Thank yeah? you. Yeah, and uh, not so many are doing 
it the way you're doing it now and um yeah this is a high value uh, high value conversation ah, and it. um it's a pleasure to be here yes. and uh, and speak my voice yes and i think you're giving so many kenyans also their voice and i'd like you to continue with that energy thank you means a lot okay we are not gonna <laughs> tell about but thank you it means a lot and i hope one day when we make it to switzerland we are going to meet you among other kenyan yes, people yes you're there. welcome you're welcome yes. anytime just anytime. Uh, give me a call yes. just tell me that you're around and then uh, don't yeah don't play i got the doctor's contacts now i'll be like <laughs> mama zuena niko hapa nje mimi you know i know in diaspora guys you make appointments you have to make appointments I mean, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, the kenyan in me will come and i'll be like niko hapa nje fungueni mlango yeah you're welcome anytime yes, that's anytime. It, yeah. anytime you're around just yes. give us a call yeah. we will be happy uh, yeah. to to accommodate you thank you i appreciate it and i'm going to be having an amazing amazing conversation with your lady your wife and you have an incredible family yeah, so thank you. Thank god's you. grace love and light and thank continue you. blossoming thank yeah and guys i want you to tell me what you honestly think about today's conversation because as i started i said the intention was for you to be inspired to be motivated i keep saying guys and he said something in, like beautiful about imagination and i don't know if it's confucius that says imagination is more powerful than knowledge sometimes your mind must arrive somewhere before your life does and it's okay to imagine yourself at your fullest potential do not be shy of imagining greater things for your life do not be shy of breaking generational curses so that you know sometimes it's you you will be the first one in your family to get somewhere and that too is okay that too is okay do not limit yourself do not feel inferior about yourself you are not your looks you are what you think and you are what you imagine so go out there and conquer and i hope you really have been inspired and as you've had i love having this conversation with people in diaspora because as we started i did say this amazing episode is powered by kings developers limited i know you know them for the incredible buildings such as prism towers or sifa towers but did you also know they have affordable housing for you boma in ruiru iko to upper ruiru you can go and grab yourself an apartment you know apollo you can go and grab yourself an apartment the best part they have apartments that are ranging from 4m all the way to maybe around 27m they cater for everyone so do not get duped and he said something work with people who are certified they are iso certified too so waki kukosea pahali all you got to go do is report to the relevant authorities and that's why it's important for you to invest with companies that if they fail you you have places that you can go report and be compensated so do check them out their contact details will be pinned on the comment section and i urge you to also go check their website but if you also want to share your story with me you know where to find me info at lnn.digital or lin.gogi at lnn.digital thank you for sitting with us through this episode i appreciate you my people and thank you for the amazing support you're giving our channel i don't want to say it loud but 600k subscribers here we come germany here we come belgium here we come we might not make it to Switzerland this time but I know we will continue just moving around until we are able to collectively cover beautiful african stories i do appreciate your support take good care of yourself to the amazing team that puts this work together thank you i do not take your work for granted and as i said earlier i urge you to follow your dream no matter how hard it can become to anane kesho at 10 am god's grace wishing you a lot of joy today and of course my elegant dress is giving my guest already said it's giving so it's giving bye to anane kesho watu wangu cheers